So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be replacing another weak point on the Mark 1 TT. Well, to be fair, any 1.8 turbo in the VAG sort of range. And what that is, is in this box. So let's hit the intro. What this is, is a recirculation valve. Obviously I went black, because the theme of the engine's all black, so apart from those nice bits from uh, Quantum Solutions, which are the only bits under there that are gonna be popping. And we still need to paint that inlet manifold as well. So I've got the paint for that, so we will be doing that at some point. We'll get that inlet manifold off and repaint that. But yeah, so here it is, the forge recirculation valve. And what you get in it is obviously the valve. You get the yellow spring, Jubilee. You get a nice little key ring. You get some spare screws. Another Jubilee. And a blue spring. I believe it's already got a green spring inside it already. So this is what the springs mean. If you look up at here, it will tell you the different boost levels that they recommend the different colored springs that you use. Why you ask, what is a recirculation valve? Right, so what a recirculation valve is, a recirculation blow off valve releases the pressure from the turbo, diverting the excess back into the engine, preventing the turbo lag caused by excess pressure, maintaining the proper and efficient spool up of the turbo. I so blatantly just read that off my phone. But yeah, that is what a recirculation valve does. So where is your recirculation valve when you're 180? It's there. So not too bad to do. So let's whip this engine cover off, get to that valve and get it off. But before we do that, we need to change the spring in the valve because this is a mapped car. And for the boost it's running at the moment, it should be running the yellow spring. So we've got to change that over to the yellow spring first. So let's do that. So to change the spring, just literally just undo the three screws on top with the Allen key, which is supplied in the packaging, pull the old spring out, put the new spring in, tighten it all back down, make sure it's all nice and tight. Job done. And the reason a lot of people do upgrade to the Forge one, this does seem very popular sort of upgrade for this engine. It's obviously because it's made of metal. It's not plastic like the other one, so it's not gonna really leak. It's gonna hold the boost a lot better, so you've got less chance of getting a boost leak. So let's start fitting this on. First things first, let's get the engine cover off. So there's two little fixings right there. Put it screwdriver, bang, bang. Easy, I'll take that out of the way as well. So I undone the N75 valve at the top, and then I started on the lower Jubilee, undone that one, then started on the upper one, undone those Jubilees, and then I undone the clip on the top, pulled the top hose off, and then removed the old diverser valve from the car. Now with the old diverter valve removed from the car, I put the new one back in the place where the old one was, started doing all the Jubilees back up, get them nice and tight, And then using the cable tie that came in the packaging, just tighten up that top hose and clip that. Done. So with the valve all on. And now let's just refit the engine cover. Now it's all put back together. There it is, just there. One thing to do now, it's start it up and maybe take it out for a test drive. <laughs> If you're enjoying these videos, why not consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turn your notifications on.
Right, let's see if it feels any different. I mean, a lot of people have said it feels smoother and all sorts of things, but I don't know. So let's go and find out for ourselves. I'm not sure if it feels any different. I mean, the car does feel quite sort of smooth anyway, um, since we've changed a few things. The noise from the engine, from the air filter. I would say it's probably not maybe as, as, as loud as Tinny. Maybe a stronger sort of whoosh, if that makes any sort of sense. Maybe a, a deeper tone, that's it. I would say the, the, uh, the whooshing that comes through the um, induction kit feels like it sounds a lot deeper than what it did before now i don't know if that's because it's just holding the boost better or whether it's just all in my head so it could be that you know what i mean it's like anything when you put something in your car you think oh is that better it's like oh i don't know was it like that before who knows and i think it is just another sort of weak point taken off the car which is something we don't really have to now worry about in the future obviously with the forge kits you can buy the service kits for them so maybe like once a year once every couple of years i mean i don't really do many miles in my tt's and between both of them i mean i don't know yeah i don't really do many miles in my tt so i don't really uh worry about things like that but do you know saying i was thinking about it the other day and uh, actually it was last night. I was going through my YouTube stuff and I, I, came, I went through like my playlist for this car and I was thinking from that episode one to where the car is now, the car has come along so far. It's gone from a car that basically had no MOT, it had loads of like little niggly sort of faults on it and stuff, to now it's actually quite a nice sort of TT now and we've upgraded a lot of parts on it. And it, it, you just you just sort of forget all the little bits that you've sort of done it, like the windows weren't dropping, we've done that. And it, obviously we've done the intercooler stuff, we've done that recently, we've done that twice, because we've got that crap uh, gravity one, first of all, which wasn't the best, and now we've got the nice welly cooler in there. But no, until you actually go through all the back videos that you, you've done, like, on the mark one sort of projects it's sort of you don't realize how much you have actually done until you look back and go oh yeah i forgot i done that yeah i forgot i done that i forgot i had that issue it's like the headlamps even had a fault for the headlamps ages and ages ago when we first got it and we saw that just all those sort of little sort of bits and to be honest with you i, I am quite happy with the car it is quite a nice car now but obviously there's always things to do isn't it so obviously suspension needs to get done the brakes, I'm thinking about probably changing the brakes again because of well, the calipers going for sort of like a big brake sort of conversion because I don't think they're that good to be honest with me. Compared to the Mark II, they're absolutely like they wouldn't basically. You might as well just, I don't know, they're just crap. Back onto the uh, onto diverter valve. Yeah, I would say the diverter valve, has it made the power feel any smoother? Has it not? I don't really know. It could all be in my head. The car feels good. The engine feels strong. Maybe it just helps control the boost that little bit better. But I would say the diverter valve is probably worth doing. So I think it will hold the boost and control the boost a lot better than what that plastic one does. And the plastic ones do tend to fail. Especially if you've got sort of like a matte car and stuff, eventually it will fail because it is only plastic. Whereas this one's all metal, which is a lot better. The car feels good. The car feels strong. It felt pretty good before that. I think the clutch is starting to slip a little bit. So that is something that we might have to take care of soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.